Harry's Wife, Part 101.4 Her Reaction to the Death of the Queen Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I have explained elsewhere about how narcissists react following the death of somebody, and I'd invite you to seek out my videos that deal with the question of death and the narcissist. You'll find them most interesting. Some narcissists, of course, don't really react to the death of somebody. They've got no emotional empathy or cognitive empathy, and you're met with a shrug, and perhaps a comment of, well, everybody dies in the end, and you're left thinking, my gosh, how cold and callous that response is. But that particular narcissist doesn't give a fig, because they've got no emotional empathy, and their narcissism doesn't operate with a facade. Therefore, they just shake their head and think, don't know what you're getting so upset about. Everybody dies at some point. Get on with it. Act accordingly. With the mid-range narcissists, of course, it's all about the show and the facade. Oh, Uncle Eric, how I miss him, wails the middle-mid-range type A narcissist, having not had anything to do with him for the last five years, and indeed repeatedly turning down invitations to go and see him. Yet turns up like the Death Watch beetle, click clacking, click clacking those heels across the stone floor at the church, and then making a big show of crying and dabbing the eyes, and perhaps even throwing themselves at the coffin and wailing at the top of their voice. They believe that they're grieving, they believe that they miss Uncle Eric, but of course they do not, because there isn't a shred of emotional empathy within their bodies. We just don't have it. The narcissism, however, in order to assert control and nullify the threat to control posed by the fact that the funeral is about somebody else, drives the narcissist to behave in this over-the-top expression of grief. In other instances, it may be more subtle, turning up, paying respect, speaking favourably about the individual, but ensuring that the occasion is milked, albeit in a quieter way, by talking to friends and family, and maintaining that facade of saying, oh yes, old Tom, great guy, everybody loved old twinkly-eyed, huge-penised Tom, yes. There are lots of different ways that a narcissist will deal with death, but ultimately, of course, it has to fit within the confines of the prime aims, ensuring that people are kept under control, that the death of this person, which is a threat to control, is nullified in some shape or form, whether it's just dismissal or empty platitudes, the drawing of fuel, death and funeral is an excellent opportunity for the narcissist to milk it for the fuel, and in certain instances, of course, the residual benefit, the maintenance of the facade, and, of course, the possibility that there might be, ka -ching, some money on the way as a consequence of being a beneficiary to that person's estate. But what about Harry's wife? What has her reaction been to the death of the Queen? Well, to begin with, of course, there was the simple and heartfelt, apparently, tribute. The Super Sore Away Sun, following the news of the Queen's death, wrote in an article by Ed Southgate, Mark of Respect, Prince Harry and Harry's wife's heartfelt tribute to Queen as couple honour Her Majesty with social media gesture. Prince Harry and Harry's wife have released a heartfelt tribute to the late Queen. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex changed their Archwell website to just a single black page, writing, In loving memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, 1926 to 2022. And users are no longer able to access any other part of the website as a mark of respect. Those who don't understand narcissism would look at that and think, What a lovely gesture. Simple and effective. And it is. But what you must understand that that decision wasn't driven by emotional empathy on the part of Harry's wife, but quite simply her narcissism deemed it would be appropriate for you to create a touching tribute, do something minimalist, so that the facade is managed and it asserts control and nullifies any potential criticism of you not doing anything. And lo, she acts accordingly. Similarly, as I recorded a marvellous tribute to Her Majesty yesterday, I didn't do so because I have emotional empathy. I did so because I deemed that it was appropriate for the purposes of the achievement of the prime aims. I, of course, know that I am doing that. Harry's wife doesn't know the reasons why. That is one of the major differences between 
her and me. Thus the Sun reported it as such. Romper.com, whatever that happens to be, tells us, When Queen Elizabeth died at the age of 96 years old at Balmoral Castle on Thursday, she was surrounded by family. Her children, including the newly sworn in King Charles III, and her grandchildren, including both Prince William and Prince Harry, who was already in the UK to attend a charitable event and redirect it to Scotland after receiving news that his grandmother was ill. Now, he and his wife, Harry's wife, have paid tribute to Britain's longest reigning monarch. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex took to their Archwell Foundation website in the hours after Buckingham Palace announced Queen Elizabeth's death with a simple message in loving memory of Queen Elizabeth II, 1926 to 2022. The Campbell's simple message was written on a black background, while access to the site has been temporarily paused. So you understand why this has been done. The narcissism dictated that in order to assert control, to draw fuel by way of reaction, and of course the residual benefit of facade management, it directed Harry's wife to behave in this fashion. Prince Harry would go along with it. It's suitably uh, supportive and appreciative of his grandmother, so no problem there. However, this was reported not just in the Super Soar Away Sun and, of course, Romper.com, but also the List.com, Heavy.com, US Magazine, The Mirror, Town and Country, Hollywood Life, and another 20 outlets. Why? Well, quite simply, Harry's wife's PR team let them all know, look at what Harry's wife and Prince Harry have done. Their foundation has temporarily paused the website and put up this message. See what good and decent and empathic people they are. Typically, of course, of the narcissist, we don't exist unless someone recognises that it has happened. Harry's wife can't simply issue the instruction of close down the website, put up a tribute, and that'll do. If they happen to see it and report on it, so be it. But we don't need to make some good dance about it. We just do this simple and good act. We don't need praise or recognition. That would be the response of someone, for instance, like the Princess of Wales, who would issue an appropriate tribute without looking to bring attention to it. The Princess of Wales behaves that way because she has considerable emotional empathy. But with Harry's wife, she has none. And therefore, whilst there will be people who won't understand the fact that she only does this because it accords with the prime aims, and that they will see this as a cynical observation on my part, they're completely wrong. Not only does her narcissism drive her to put up the tribute, but it drives her to bring attention to it by ensuring that the PR agency tells 30 or so outlets, demonstrating the lack of shame on her part, the fact that it's basically, hey, everybody, everybody, look at me. Look at me. See, I care. Look, I really do care. Look how tasteful I am with regard to the death of the Queen. See how loving and kind I am with this minimalist response talking about in loving memory of her and that we've closed down the website. See how wonderful I am? I'm not even merching at the moment in order to show my respect. But everybody notice. Now see this. Now see this. A non-narcissist would not bring attention to it. But Harry's wife has to. You see, she doesn't really care. She's just made to think that she cares by her narcissism in order to get to those prime aims. If you were to say to Harry's wife, this is just a cynical exercise in you asserting control, drawing fuel, managing your facade, and you don't give a fig about Her Majesty, she would undoubtedly respond by saying, how could you say such a thing after how lovely I've been to her? Well, I'll tell you. Your behaviour in recent months demonstrates that you don't give a fig for the well-being of that lady who was a sterling servant to her nation. The fact that you behaved in the way that you did when her husband was dying, the fact that you've repeatedly thrown pelters from across the ocean, demonstrates that you don't care. But of course, as you know, it's entirely fruitless and pointless to point this out to her because her narcissism simply will not accept it. Her reaction is entirely manufactured a robotic response generated by her narcissism for the purposes of asserting control over those that she's dealing with and managing that all-important facade and drawing fuel.
but underneath it all, there is not a shred, an ounce, an iota, a speck of emotional empathy driving her behaviour. It is all being done by her narcissism. And that is what drives her reaction to the death of Queen Elizabeth. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.